we come together every week. I'm just going to say this again because nobody's here. <laughs> Great. Well, we always miss it. Okay. Miss it, yeah. Welcome to Fresh Press Science on the Nexus Sci Community YouTube channel. I'm Susanna L. Harris. I'm Gabby Sarada Marks. And each week we get together here uh, and talk about interesting science in the news. We look at the research behind that science. And importantly, we've started talking about uh, advice in grad school. And that could be advice anywhere from applying to grad school like we did last week. If you haven't checked that video, go right now, pause this one, go check out the other one. Uh, but we're gonna be talking about all these different types of uh, different pieces of grad school. Anything from applications to actually writing and even maybe defending in the future. So if you have any ideas for us to talk about advice of our own opinions and anything else we can find online, we're happy to do that. Today for this Fresh Press Advice, we're gonna be talking about how do you know when you're done with experiments? How do you know when you actually have a conclusion? My three tips are, first of all, that when you can answer your initial questions, that probably means that you should pause and think about being done. Because I think a lot of the times people say, well, I have the answer to that one, but I have five more questions that I wanna keep working with, I wanna keep going. And it's important to know when to segment out your research and to move on to the next thing or to publish something um, or present it so that you can get feedback on it. So I think it's really important to not just keep going um, without getting any kind of publication out. So when you can answer your initial questions, that's a great time to pause. Would be when you have a completely new direction that you want to pursue that you think will work better. So uh, that's kind of a nice way of being like, you messed up or your science is not going as planned and you found a solution and that's really, really good. Um, that means that you can pursue that as long as you have your collaborators permission. I think it makes a lot of sense to have the humility to say, actually, I'm going to try a totally different tactic or a parallel one. So I think that's a good time to stop your first experiment. And my last one is kind of similar, but when you've tried absolutely everything and you've used all your resources and you still can't come up with a new way to spin the project or a, something to kind of recover it, I think it's really, really important to cut your losses and then keep going with a different project. Um, that's something that I think is the hardest for anyone to do, um, but especially young scientists. It's really hard to say I either this is not working the way I'm doing it, or like these bacteria are not doing what we thought we would do. But it's so important to just say, all right, let's do something wildly different. So I guess two and three are very similar. That's actually really interesting because I think some of ours overlap and some are, are kind of different. And I like that yours kind of go from, okay, it works really well, stop because you've done it, to you need to stop because it's not what you think it is. So the first tip I have is sort of a cop out. The first tip that I have is to ask your advisor. Uh, hopefully your graduate program, hopefully you as a student have chosen someone that you trust to be a good scientific advisor and to teach you how to make these sort of decisions. And so my first tip is to really use them as a resource and go to them and say, hey, am I done? Does this answer the questions we were trying to ask. I think one misconception in science is that you stop doing experiments when you know you're right. And if that was the case, you would never stop doing experiments. And oftentimes your PI never wants you to stop doing experiments. PI means primary investigator or principal investigator. That's basically your boss in a lab. If they're someone who wants you to just keep going, then you might have to make the decision that the question you're asking has been answered and you can talk to other scientists and say, given this data, can you come up with any other conclusions other than the ones that I have drawn? And if no one else can come up with conclusions other than the ones that you and your team have drawn, it's probably a pretty sound conclusion. You should be done when you feel comfortable being done. In the end, if you are an author on a paper that's going to be published, you're the one who's going to have to defend this work. And if there's any part of you that feels uncomfortable making the conclusions that you're drawing, it probably is not a good sign. I kind of wanted to ask you about, uh, especially about the third point, because I thought that was really interesting. 
um, how do you know when it's not working today versus not working at all, right? Because yeah. sometimes the experiments, uh, you have to do them a bunch of times before it works. And especially if you're doing something four or five times, what happens when two out of the five times it doesn't work? I think that is one of the places where the expertise that your advisor has or the postdocs in your lab, someone with more experience, I think this is where that becomes so important because they have this sense of this will work eventually or you know what, we have enough evidence now that this isn't working. And I've found that talking to someone with more experience is pretty much the only way I can figure that out at this point. I don't know if that's different for, for you. Do you feel like you know when it's a complete failure versus a today failure? <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, I think I, I am always still really in this feeling of, is this not working at all? Am I doing the wrong thing? Am I doing the right thing? Uh, that's why I think it is really important as you're choosing your advisor uh, to pick somebody that you trust to help you make those decisions. One thing that I think we wanted to bring up too was this idea of falsifiability. So we're going to have a couple of resources and references for everyone down in the links below. I to kind of look it up and figure out exactly if we're talking about the same thing um, in terms of like the double negative part of it and kind of like <laughs> I had to wrap my head around it a little bit. For me, a, a good example would be um, you might say, well, if it is raining out, I expect to see umbrellas, right? So your hypothesis is that if you look out your window and it's raining, you will also see umbrellas. Now, if you look outside your window and you don't see umbrellas, it could still be raining, right? So if, if the hypothesis is umbrellas mean that there's rain, and if there's rain, there will always be umbrellas. If you look outside and see no umbrellas, uh, one, there could be no rain, or two, there could be no people. So falsifiability means that whatever question you're asking and the way that you're asking it can be tested and can be um, can be shown to be wrong. Essentially, you're asking a question in a way that if it's wrong, you'll find out. Um, yeah, that's a really good explanation. I like the umbrella thing. You know, in in summary, I think that these kind of decisions are are really important. It's really important to decide for yourself uh, and to learn through grad school or through research or through other uh, sources when to stop asking the questions because it's not something that there's one easy guide to it. It's gonna be really subjective. And at the end of the day, you're gonna to have to be the person who stands up and says, I feel good about this. It's super important to talk to your advisor also, just to reiterate that like the one person who is supposed to help you the most is gonna be your advisor. And there are definitely cases where your advisor might be pushing you to continue an experiment that's not working or pushing you to stop an experiment that you still think has a lot of merit for whatever reason. And so in that case, I think it's important to find another faculty member that you really trust to go over things with you and get sort of a scientifically neutral uh, or scientifically ex experienced but with no skin in the game kind of opinion. My program at least has something um, called a thesis committee. I think a lot of them do where these, this is a group of people who their job is to help me get to graduation. So they're the people that if I'm having anything going on with my boss, uh, I can go to them and ask them for their opinion. So I think if your department or your program has that, definitely use your resources, use your thesis committee, use your director of graduate studies. And if it doesn't, uh, for your own success, I think it's important to go out and, and find those. Thank you for coming to this part of Fresh Press Science, what we're calling Fresh Press Advice. If you have any other questions for Gabby or I, please follow us on Instagram, send us a message, leave a comment down below this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really does make a big difference. So please subscribe to our channel, the Sci Communities Nexus. Nexus, a Sci Community Project. What is it called? Please subscribe to this channel. Yeah.